Good afternoon, everyone. We are starting with today's topic that is ergonomic principles in job analysis. I'll just start my PPT. Okay, so this is a major, uh, major topic of industrial therapy that we will be covering today. It will give you all an idea about how to write your paper, how to manage patients um, or the questions basically that you, you've been asked in exams for 15 marks related to industrial therapy. Okay, people are still coming in. I'll just admit all and use that. I request please do not write anything on the board. So we'll start. The ergonomic principles and job analysis. What is ergonomics? Why is this not? Yeah. So what is ergonomics? Ergonomics is essentially uh, known as fitting the job to the worker. Okay because one size fits all is not working uh, as you have seen through researches that it, it does not work that something may be comfortable for me work the some kind of working environment which i am comfortable in cannot be comfortable for you because all of us have different body structure different capacities uh, and different physiology so that is why we need ergonomics uh, in more detail, ergonomics is a science and practice of designing, designing the jobs and workplaces to match the capabilities and limitations of the human body. Uh, if you see, it is a relationship between the, it is a relationship between the physical environment and the equipment that we are using. So, so we might think that it is very hard. So that is what the picture below is showing you all putting put. Now we'll all put on our ergonomic glasses. This it need not be hard. We can make changes in the environment to make things easier for us to work with. Okay. Is it not working? So health issues which may be related to poor ergonomics. Obviously, there are health issues that come up because of improper workplace environment. And that is why we need to study about it. That is why there is origin of industrial therapy. That is why physical therapists are involved in same. So what are the injuries or illnesses that can lead uh, that can lead due to poor ergonomics. These are few listings of those disorders or injuries, but these are not it. There can be many more. These are just examples like musculoskeletal disorders, which we, uh, which were earlier, or they are still referred to as cumulative trauma disorders or work-related musculoskeletal disorders. I can say CTS or CTD, commonly known as. Uh, then there are spinal or low back injuries, which are usually included in work-related musculoskeletal disorders, soft tissue injuries, tenosynovitis, epicondylitis, headaches, eye strain, etc. So uh, Dan McLeod had uh, has given us. You can I've put reference everywhere, guys. So you can just read or note down reference and then check accordingly. So it has given us. A few physical as well as cognitive principles of ergonomics by which we should always abide and make changes in our workplace environment. So what are the physical principles of ergonomics? There are 10 physical principles and there are 10 cognitive principles. We'll first see the physical principles. Uh, um, and it is not necessary that this physical principles can only be applied to your workplace environment. It can be applied at your home or any work that you are doing. Even the work that are done by housemates is at our home. Is their workplace environment 
and now because of the lockdown we are all doing the same we are all working from home so this these principles apply everywhere okay so first principle of all is work in neutral postures your posture provides a good starting point for evaluating the tasks that you do the best position of which is to work um, best position in which to work are those that keep your body in neutral positions we all know we all we all have learned postural evaluation in uh, second year we know why should our posture be straight and correct uh, there is minimal loading on the body minimal workload uh, minimal strain to the muscles when our body is actually aligned in the way it is meant to be aligned the proper curvature of our spine the proper lordosis kyphosis that follows with our cervical spine thoracic spine and lord um, lumbar spine so here you can see the pictures this person is working on a table but he is very far like he's sitting a little far away from his chair he does not have back support so you can modify it you can give him proper lumbar support you can reduce the distance between his uh, table so that he is properly seated back with proper back support and uh, lumbar curve here you are seeing this person is bending again and again he has to do uh, bending reposition and uh, unload the box or something like that whatever his work is you can modify this by lifting the box up so that he does not have to bend again and again although he can squat but then he has to uh, go down and remove something from the box as you can see here so we can just lift it up uh, so that he can just stay in a neutral spine position and work with his hands mm -hmm. the second principle the second principle is to reduce excessive force that is taking place on any part of the body so um, these can be on a muscle this can be on a joint or any part of the body what happens is when a part of your body is repeatedly uh, hammered with a single kind of stress force it will get fatigue it, the fatigue uh, after the setting of fatigue if it is still um, subjected to same amount of force it is uh, going to get injured so we need to eliminate that here you can see this person is uh, pulling or pushing i guess he's pulling whatever he is doing he's straining his neck and his back if you just uh, if, if we just modify this position or maybe just uh, these small wheels if we put a better big wheels in his box he may able to just uh, with a slight push he may he may be able to just push the uh, box with a little effort and not straining his back or um, neck uh, even we can uh, make use of technologies uh, machines uh, where we can just give him some kind of uh, harness or a car where he can just lift the box and go the other uh, better example on your right hand side you can see is uh, this person has to lift the box maybe this box is filled with some um, heavy material or weight which he has to lift it and go here he is straining his entire wrist fingers and the grip that he is getting is not proper because the because of this it will lead to excessive amount of force on different parts of elbows wrist and fingers instead of we just give him handles as you can see here where he can put his uh, fingers inside and hold the uh, box properly it will give him better grip because this is a part of our functional grip that is hook grasp okay so this will give him a better grip better work of muscle which will be unloaded from your uh, major wrist, uh, wrist muscles flexors and extensors and uh, will be done the major work will be done by your small finger muscles which they are supposed to do now third uh, principle is keeping everything in easy reach this principle is redundant to with the posture it is it helps to evaluate the task from a specific perspective now a person is sitting um, say in the office he has a lot of work to do so uh, 
we have to make sure that everything is within his reach envelope there are as you can see here this picture it shows what is reach envelope um, there are two semi circles around near to his hands and there is one big semi circle which is away from his hand so these tell you that whatever objects he has to use frequently during his entire work period he has to keep it within these two small semi circles now for example if he has to write okay he, he has to take notes of uh, many things that he is viewing on the uh, say computer office table or anything like that he has to take notes so we can think that um, we if he's writing so we have to just put it near his right hand and not left hand because then he he will have to cross the entire path from right to left and uh, then take it and uh, come back so that is excessive work for his body and less efficient work so we can make sure that we keep the pen stand within the small semi circle of his right hand in other case uh, if he has to um say the paper on which he is writing those are very loose papers or some notebooks or notepads right so that he can keep near his uh, left hand because he he does he can hold it with left hand and write with right hand if he is right then uh, there are certain other um, objects in the on the table for example say the clock which he doesn't need unless he needs to change time or uh, some kind of uh, frames and whatever he needs on his workstation he can keep it away from the uh, bigger semi circle or inside if he needs it over a particular period of time but not extremely frequent so this is reach and below the fourth principle is work at proper heights it has been seen that it is easier to do heavier works when uh, heavier work with when it is done below the level of elbow and small precise uh, work of precision is done above the level of elbow uh, you can see here uh, this man is welding something and hammering a big uh, heavy object which he is doing below the level of elbow and uh, this man is using his uh, precision grasp sorry pen holding position to engrave something on this object which is done above the level of elbow most of the things on desk work are done at the level of elbow we will see it further uh, ergonomics for desk workers how we should modify it usually always make sure whenever you are modifying an object which involves heavy lifting heavy work uh modified as such that it has to be done below the level of elbow and more finer work to be done above the level of elbow yeah uh the fifth ergonomic prin uh, physical principle is re re uh, reduce excessive motion at any part of the body it uh, the motions that are done um excessively for example uh, you can see here this person is handling a screw driver he has to screw it again and again again and again so what happens is he is using his supination pronation but uh, it is because of doing it again and again he may get uh, uh, epicondylitis at the elbow level or he may injure some of his wrist muscles if it is not proper and if he is not following the neutral position and doing it again uh, repetitive uh, if it is if he is doing it repetitively um here for its uh, modification or reducing the excessive motion you can see this is an electrical uh, screw driver or electrical uh, equipment which helps you to screw uh, the whatever mending he is doing easily okay uh, another example here it is that uh, this person has to lift the objects from this uh, crane and put it in this box from this crane he has to lift and put it in, in that box again and again so he'll be turning and twisting his torso again and again which may lead to some kind of back injuries he is standing for a long time other modification that we can do to reduce this excessive motion is just tilt the box 
connected to the box in such a way that he can just push the items directly from this uh, conveyor belt into the box. This may not involve too much uh, change in the torso position. He will just have to move it with his hand. So force is also reduced as well as the movements are reduced. Although he is standing for a long time, so we can give some uh, other modification. We will see for what we can do for knees to stand for a long time. This is what we do. Minimize fatigue and static load. Holding the same position for a period of time is known as static loading. It will create a lot of discomfort and may interfere with the work. Even if you can see now, uh, if you are standing for a long time and doing, for example, when we are at our postings, we are standing for a long time observing something or for, uh, during our practicals when ma'am is teaching us, we are standing near the bed, not able to sit, you have to concentrate, but then our back starts yeah. hurting, muscles ache, and we cannot concentrate and it will interfere with our uh, work we are doing. So we have to modify. Always um, load and unload your body. Do not have static load on any part of the body. This person we saw was standing for a long time earlier. We can give them a foot rest. Someone is unmuted. Please mute your mic. Yes. So um, you can give them a foot rest. So that for some time he will be loading uh, his body weight to this part of the leg and then to the other. This can also be done with the patients who have problem with their knees, some old old people with osteoarthritis. This can be practiced anywhere. That is minimizing the static load and fatigue. Okay, now next. Sorry. Minimizing the pressure points. Uh, sometimes when you're using tools or any, uh, even while sitting, you can see that if the space is not proper, you may always touch your knees to the table or when you're using some fine tools, even while we are writing, while writing an exam, we all have observed this. If the pen does not have a proper grip, it, our hands start hurting, our fingers start hurting because they're a creation of pressure points. Uh, which are abnormal and which will lead to contact stress. This contact stress will lead to injury. So to avoid this, we have to make some modifications. Like here you can see this person using this equipment. Uh, there, was, there was convexity at the outer surface of this equipment, which was hurting his palm. But if you modify the same e equipment to take the contour of your uh, thenar eminence, it is easier for the person to hold it and work with it easily. Same, the other example you can see, uh, the person has to put a paste or glue, something like that. He has to work with it continuously. But the edge of this table is very pointy and may hurt the person. This is very pointy, it may hurt, lead to contract, contact stress and injury. That is why you can just modify it. The way they have modified, give some cushioning and uh, you can eliminate the pressure points. The eighth principle is provide clearance. Obviously, if there is a lot of congested area, no one of us likes to work that way. It's very congested. Uh, so thus, you, all, you always need to have a little clearance uh, for, for the employees, for the workers. So uh, we should be able to move our hands freely, move our legs freely. There should not be anything below the table so that you have place to stretch your legs. Uh, and so on to understand, provide clearance. Ninth is move, exercise, and stretch. This is another way that is just in relation with minimizing uh, static loading because once there is static load, you need to uh, give some dynamic activity to the body, which you do by moving, exercising, and stretching in your workplace environment. Earlier, there was 90, 90, 90 rule, like 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, you have to um, do some exercises for say one and a half minutes, 90 seconds. But uh, now you can, now they say you can even do it for 30, 30, 30 rule or 15, 15, 15 rule. Uh, maintaining, maintaining a comfortable environment. This principle is more or less a 
cache that can mean different things depending upon the nature of types of operation that you can do. Basically, a comfortable environment means that you should check the light in the part you are working in because if, if, uh, like if there isn't proper lighting or if there is uh, for example, you can you can understand that uh, if you are working on a computer or a laptop for a long period of time, uh, you may strain your eyes, you can get headache if there is no proper lighting. Even while reading, if you do not get proper light, you can strain your eyes, you can get headache, you can feel uncomfortable. That is why I always ensure that in any working environment, there is proper illumination, proper air, uh, there's exchange of air, uh, open doors, windows, etc. should be comfortable. Here you can see the ideal environment. The, uh, the, uh, her spine is in neutral position, her back is rested, her uh, work, keyboard working activity is at her elbow level, uh, which can be adjustable, you can see here. Her uh, eyesight is, whatever um, computer she is working on is at her eyesight level. She does not have to go up or down to see that it is, it is at 90 degree angles. There's proper illumination, there is an open window. She has leg space, she has comfortable environment where she can work. So these are the physical principles of ergonomics, whatever changes you can make. Now, next time you see anyone working even, now you guys are working at home, helping your mom. See for the positions you are maintaining, what, what modifications you can do, and so on. Now, apart from physical, uh, physical, principles, whatever changes you need physically, any work or any job also requires cognitive processes, your perceptual abilities and making things as simple as possible for a person to intellectually understand and decipher how to work with the controls that he has been given. Okay, So all the works are not always uh, uh, of physical importance. They also require intelligence or intellect. So uh, it is often seen that uh, whatever human errors occur in a workplace are due to poor ergonomics. Many mistakes and errors that people make are really due to poor design, such as confusing dials or controls that do not work as they are expected to work. For example, um, uh, if you are, if there are two, three dials, if there is a red dial, there is a blue dial, there is a white dial. We all know by convention that red means stop or red means something danger. But if you press the red button and it is actually not for emergency, it is actually not for emergency. Just a second. If it is not for emergencies, then it may uh, happen that there may be some kind of error. So with good ergonomics, uh, errors should be reduced in the products and processes ranging from simple household appliances, just cooking range to control panels. Uh, yeah, it, this co cognitive ergonomics can be used anywhere. We'll see how. Cognitive errors made by a person, what are the types of errors that are made by a person? It can be perception error, it can be decision error, or it can be action error. Perception error, like the operator was, he made an, uh, the, the people are still joining in. Guys, please do not come in this late. It is very disturbing for me. Yeah. So the operator making the error did not, it may be that the operator that is, uh, that ha, uh, the operator who has made the error did not grasp the needed information. It can be for many reasons like the message that was portrayed by the control wasn't clear or maybe he was not trained, the person was not trained to receive that kind of information or operate that particular dial. 
then there may be decision errors decision error the person may have thought that this is not what i have to do but uh, he did something uh, different he may have judged any situation in a wrong way so this may happen and then there are action errors it may be like the uh, controls were not laid out in a proper way they do not uh, operate as the person expected them to operate the for example i told that uh, there are, there was right uh, red panel blue panel white panel we know for emergencies we usually danger or something the, the color is red so we press the red but it is not uh, it, it's not doing the work that it is supposed to do there may be action errors so there are three perception error decision error and action errors it can be done okay we'll start with cognitive principles the first cognitive principle is standardization standardize all the important aspects of a job for example uh, say uh, example you have there are uh, if some electrician has come to your house and fixed your uh, tube light or any electrical appliance the next time it goes out of order you call for you do not call for the same elect, uh, electrician there may be some other electrician that may fill him for a uh, fill for him or something like that but they all know how to work properly why because they have color coding in the wires the same goes with plumbers they have color coding in pipes the same goes with us if you know that whenever you are uh, using some equipments with patient you have different uh colors of bio uh, segregations for biomedical waste and you know exactly where to put in your gloves where to put in your mask in which dustbin you should put in what objects so that is known as standardization that is you make a general rule for similar devices that work together okay that is standardization now that is use stereotypes now some people may get confused between stereotypes and standardization um actually a standardization is a formal uh, standardization is formal agreement to eliminate inconsistency because uh, you know that uh, the medical council has told you that you have to put this uh, uh, this type of waste in this color of bag that is why you are doing it however what happens with stereotype that it is an informal convention it has been uh, generated over like a long period of time it has been generated it has been evolved over a period of time you all know that no one was no one has taught you that if you want to increase the sound button you have to move the dial to the uh, in a clockwise direction how do you know that because it is a it is a convention uh, method tap kholna hai to um, anti clockwise clockwise how do you know that it is a convention so um, the same way red is for danger we all know that if red sign is there you have to stop or there is some danger you, know, you do not have to touch it like flipping switches you know that if you uh, press it press the switch on the uh, downward side it gets switched on if you press it above it gets switched off how do you know that it is a convention it is a stereotype however a good standardized um prince a good standardized control will be the one which uses stereotype to its benefit the third principle sorry yeah the third principle is link link the actions to the perception matlab uh, you have a control panel you you should not uh, design something that will not match what it is supposed to do what it is like if there is a switch there is a switch to on and off there is no switch to increase or decrease there is always a control uh, revolving control panel to increase or decrease some intensity in any uh, machine there is no switch you can just pull the switch up and down you cannot say that ha niche kiya to intensity badh jayega upar kiya to intensity kam ho jayega it is only for switch on and switch off but the same way if you have a dial you know dial uh, if you turn the dial it will increase if you turn it anti clockwise it will decrease so it should always uh, the perception what a person has uh, should be matching to the action of the control 
then there is uh, simplify the presentation of the information do not use excessive uh, amount of words and writing material if, if, for example if you see here that uh, if there are two sign boards and actually i've put only one just imagine if there is another sign board here which writes that uh, there is a school ahead do not go fast there is a school ahead go slow by the time you are driving you will miss those big written words and you cannot read it and you will still speed up your car but if there is this sign board which shows a person or a boy going with a bag school bag so you know there is a school plus there is a red sign plus there is a big shape that will catch your eyesight so now you know that there is a school ahead you have to go slow this is an example of simplifying the information and presenting it properly okay instead of writing big big words you can just pictureize it and make it as a sign icon use photographs rather than using written or spoken words okay then present information in appropriate detail do not give extra information do not give do not uh, leave the person under informed too so um, this is basically seen when there are uh, any kind of training uh, training uh, you say classes or something like that if you want a person to use your objects properly use your controls properly give them appropriate information do not leave them under educated or do not give them unnecessary extra detail uh, the sixth cognitive principle is present clear images uh the images ideally that uh, used that are used by the dials or controls or anything in that matter if you have any sign boards in your workplace the boards should be visible distinguishable and interpretable visit uh, someone has unmuted the mic it should be visible visible as in um it should be visible from a long distance you can see all the sign boards uh, on our road etc it, it, they are visible from a longer distance it should be distinguishable matlab background se alag dikhna chahiye theek hai you all know you've learned perceptual uh, how you perceive the depth perceiving depth of the image and everything and psychiatry psychology so you know how to make a sign distinguishable from the environment then it should be interpretable matlab samajh mein aana chahiye not like i am uh, i go to some uh, place where i do not know the language but the sign is written in their language so i cannot interpret it the same way you should always match your environment with the person who is going to work with it so make it interpretable for him distinguishable from the environment and visible from a long distance use redundancies what are redundancies you have to 